Hey guys, welcome back. Um, I'm gonna be doing a, just like a get ready with me video here before I do another look with the Ensley Rain Cold Moon Palette. Um, I have a bunch of new products that I have been messing around with for a while and I thought it might be fun to just kind of put my thoughts in a video and I can tell you what I think of them as I'm using them. And also I'm really tired today and I just don't feel like doing a uh, really structured kind of video. I just feel like doing whatever. This is not new, but um, it's the Australian Gold uh, Botanical Tinted Face Sunscreen. Um, also not new, but um, it's been a foundation I've been really liking for a long time now. This is the L'Oreal True Match Super Blendable Foundation. This one is sort of new. I did review this one on my blog. This is the CL Tint and Protect SPF 50. It's like a tinted um, sunscreen. So I have the shade 04 and it's a little bit dark for me right now. So I'm just gonna use this um, kind of like a bronzer. It's uh, It has pretty decent coverage. It's more coverage than the other sunscreen that I was using earlier, the um, Australian Gold one. Um, it's kind of between that and like a light coverage foundation and it is an all mineral SPF. And it's got kind of like a natural glowy finish to it. It looks really nice just if I don't set it. It leaves the skin with like a nice smooth, um, hydrated looking glow. And I've got another new item here. This is the Fenty Beauty Wear Even Hydrating Concealer. I have been using this probably for about two weeks now and it's not really my favorite concealer um personally for me i feel like it doesn't quite cover as well as i would like it's a little bit light in color it is um it creases under the eye if i set it with powder it does kind of help and it does reduce some of the creasing but it's just I don't know, it's just okay for me. It's not my favorite thing. It is nice and smooth. It does look nice, so if you have dry skin and creasing is not really a problem for you, and you like like lighter, medium coverage, then you'll probably like it. Uh, this is, um, it's really like movable. So this isn't a concealer that I've been liking for spot concealer. So like, usually if I use spot concealer, I'll use it like here on some like old acne marks. Um, I got some here or some really darker freckles. Like I got a few little dark freckles around here. Usually I'll just take like a small brush and apply the, the uh, concealer over those spots. But because it's pretty hydrating, it doesn't really stay very well or build on itself that well. I like something a little bit more um, that like kind of dries down and sets really well to do uh, spot concealing with. The other thing with using a formula like this for spot concealing is if I'm using, if I set it with powder and then I go over top with like powder bronzers or powder blush, like it's not really a problem, but if I'm using a, a cream blush, um, that tends to like lift this and shear off the coverage much easier. And I feel like this type of hydrating formula just really doesn't stand a chance. Okay, and then recently I saw that Makeup Forever came out with a new powder. I don't know, um, I haven't used one of their loose powders before. I do have a powder foundation from them, but uh, most of the products I've ever tried from this brand I really liked. And so I went ahead and got this because I figured it was, it was probably going to be a good product. So um, this is, 
let me get the name of the product for you. This is the HD Skin Setting Powder. And this is the larger size. They do have a mini size that is available on Makeup Forever's website. I don't think it's on Sephora right now. I, it may come later, I'm not really sure. But this one includes a puff and it fits right into the jar like that. And the jar has these large holes uh, as a sifter. The puff sits just on top of the holes like that. And I think what they meant for you to be able to do is to like flip the jar over like that with the puff over the holes. And that way you can get just some on the puff without making a mess inside of the jar. And this is not my preferred way of applying this powder or most pow powders in general. I prefer like a lighter application, but this one is meant to be a mattifying powder that is supposed to keep shine away for up to 24 hours, which I don't really, that's a bold claim for any product to do anything for 24 hours. But I think they're just trying to get the point across that this is something for shine control, oil control, and one of the ways you can do that is by applying um, powder with a puff like this. So you just kind of press it into the skin. I don't really do this very often, but like the idea is to kind of use a lot of it and really kind of sink it into the foundation. It's supposed to have uh, also blurring quality and give a smoother look to pores and fine lines. I'm gonna do, um, maybe I'll do like one half of the face applied this way and then I'll use a brush on the other half because I am kind of curious to see the difference between the two ways of applying it. I feel like every time I attempt to film a video like this, where I can give you like thoughts on several products in one video and just kind of talk freely about them, I end up not liking doing this kind of reviewing stuff in this kind of way because I feel like it takes me a while to really know what I think about a product and I'd hate to put thoughts out there that are like maybe later I'm going to come back to and go, I totally didn't understand something. I'm giving incorrect information. <laughs> and so it just becomes a little bit more like I'm more comfortable with putting in writing and having the time to really think through what I'm saying. I have tried doing both of these methods for like the past week or so. I've been kind of playing with this powder over different foundations. I've been testing for wear to, to see how, how well it actually does control oil. And so far I have not really liked using the puff just because I feel like it looks more powdery when I do it that way, even if I dust off the excess. Let me see if you're, you're able to see. Today it looks powdery on both sides. And some of that is probably just my skin needing some TLC. This was the brush and the puff. Yeah, especially like around my eyebrows, I can kind of see on this side. It's, it's kind of gathering a little bit on texture and sticking heavily to the foundation more than the side with the brush. But I, I feel like it's really only noticeable from really up close. Like, from this distance, it looks fine to me. It doesn't look cakey, it doesn't look heavy. And as far as wear, I feel like it doesn't, it is mattifying and it does control oil a little bit, but it's not like anywhere what they claim, like the 24 hour claim. I need to probably like at least once reapply it during the day around mid afternoon. I see that my skin's getting kind of shiny again. And yeah, at least once is good. I have tried reapplying it up to three times 
And one good thing I've noticed about this one is I am able to reapply it multiple times without it starting to look kind of heavier and heavier and heavier as I keep adding those layers. It kind of, it still looks like a lightweight application even after that like third reapplication. So I do like that about this powder. Um, but I feel like it's for the price, like it's really pricey. If you are really curious, I would recommend checking out the the mini just because I feel like I can get a similar result from cheaper options. Like you don't necessarily need this high-end powder to get a mattified look and control shine. I, I was gonna put a uh, cream blush, but I don't want to now that I've powdered, I forgot. So I'm gonna just pick out any powder blush that I have. I have this one, but I will have to save this for another video. This is the Milk, um, what is this? Jelly something, cooling water jelly tint. I got it in the shade Spritz, the orange one. And I kind of, I kind of like it, but I feel like it's not really, it's not super special. <laughs> oh, this one. This is the Sephora, it's a contour, a new contour they came out with like one of their really cool gray toned ones. This is the lightest one in the shade uh, Fair to Light. It's pretty gray and I do really like this. I think it's unique in the tone. I have not really found a whole lot of good cool, like truly cool toned um, contouring options. Usually they are somewhat warm. And a lot of the times they have like a red undertone that is more noticeable as you blend it out. But this one doesn't. This is, if it has any undertone at all, it's maybe leans purple. And I feel like I need to use really a really light hand with this. It is um, sheer and it does go on smooth. It blends out well. But because it is so gray, it looks like, it looks weird. It's easy to apply too much and just have it look weird. I like that this option exists, but I think that lately I've been kind of preferring warmer toned, just almost like bronzers for uh, use this way. Let's get like a little swatch of this. It's really light. And I think I'm gonna grab this blush. This is um, the Natasha Denona My Mini Dream Blush. I'm gonna just swirl all of the whole thing together. This is a highlighter and these two are um, matte shades and I'm just gonna swirl it all together. I should have used this earlier, but this is one of the NYX, um, not NYX, ELF. What, are, what is this called? The ELF uh, Clout Pout, like balms, they're like tinted balms, but they do make one clear one that doesn't have any shimmer and it's got like a minty feel to it. I really like this one. It has like, it has a scent that's kind of like coconut a little bit. I don't think it's fragranced coconut. I think it just, that's, I'm interpreting it that way, but like there are um, some different kinds of oils in here and that's just probably how I'm interpreting the smell. It feels really nice. It's like a thick, almost like a, like a lip oil, kind of thick, but um, but it melts really easy on the lips. Oh, and if you're wondering, I put a like a label on these because they do have names here, but it's so tiny, I can't see it at all. Like, literally, I can't read it. <laughs> so I put, I put bigger labels so I know what the name of the shade is. This one's called In The Clear. I got a new uh, brow gel. This is the ABH Brow Freeze Gel. It's just a clear brow gel. Um, it is a little bit different than a traditional brow gel in, 
how do I describe it? It's it dries down the way that one of those, you know, those clear face masks that you can apply and they dry down to like this shiny finish and you peel the thing off. Like that's what I feel like this is, but in a little tube that you apply to your brows. It has really strong hold and it, it doesn't really look flaky unless I apply too much. And, and then if I allow it to dry and then continue trying to apply it, then it can start to look kind of chunky and flaky. But if I work quick and I just get a thin layer on the brows, it looks clear. It has um, a slightly glossy finish to it. And the brush has two different sides. It's got like some larger bristles on one side and some smaller bristles on the other side. And it is actually flat on two sides. So you can uh, do kind of like a laminating effect if you like doing that. I do kind of like doing that on the edges of the brows. And I feel like it has um, really good hold for doing this. It's better hold than a like a regular brow gel. But I feel like I can't really control um, the shape that my brows end up in with this brush. And it kind of, it gets on the skin. If you try to use it for laminating, it definitely gets on the skin. And it can look kind of weird if you try to put makeup over it. So I try to, if I like press it down with my finger, I'll both, I am doing do two things at once. I'm like pressing the brows down against the skin, but I'm also removing excess product from the skin. So that's kind of like, how I like doing my brows when I do an eye look because I feel like it photographs a little bit better when I'm like getting in like at weird angles and I don't see the hair like sticking out in all different directions. <laughs> okay, also not a, not an old product. I've had this for a long time. This is the NYX uh, Lift and Snatch Brow Pen. I reviewed this a long time ago and I gave it a pretty good review comparing it to the um, ABH brow pen. They're very similar. Um, however, this one I kind of have a love-hate relationship with and, and I should update my review on my blog because occasionally this one leaks a little bit at the brush tip and I think it has to do with like when I'm holding it downward that maybe sometimes it just keeps releasing product into the brush and so like it doesn't happen every time I use it. It's just once in a while and it's unpredictable. <laughs> Sometimes I'll do one brow and like it comes out perfectly. And then all of a sudden, once I get to the second brow, it's starting to release way too much product into the brush. And this one comes out much darker and the lines don't come out as fine. Um, if I see that happening, I will just try not to angle it downward as I'm using it and try to clean any excess off of the brush like on the back of my hand or into a tissue so the brush tip isn't so saturated. Maybe it's just mine. I hope it's not like a general problem with this product. Like even if I were to buy another one, I'm not sure if it would happen again. Maybe I just got a bad one. And I like, I like doing my brows this way but I feel like some days they come out really good and some days it comes out horrible <laughs> and I never really know what, what I'm going to end up with. The more like relaxed and rested I am, the better it is. Like if I'm in a rush or I'm stressed out, like I'm, I'm better off not trying to do my brows this way. It takes forever to do this. It's really not like practical to do this for every day. I think I, I got lucky and they came out okay today. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna take a little bit of a break um, and let my camera cool down and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna do an eye look, but that'll be in a separate video. So um, 
if you have made it to the end and you didn't get bored, I'm sorry if you did, but if you've made it to the end, thank you for watching. Thank you for hanging out with me. I hope that you got a little bit of something out of like the new products, products that I was featuring. Um, and I don't know. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.